Today we're going to increase the storage size of this headset by swapping in a different motherboard. If you wind the clocks back about a year or two, there was three storage sizes for the Quest 2. There was the 64GB, the 128, and the 256. Nowadays you can get the 256 and the 128 for way cheaper than they used to be, and the 64GB isn't even in production anymore. So a common request from customers who send their headsets in to us for other repairs is, well, can you upgrade the storage size on my headset? And the answer is, yeah, we can. We don't do a whole lot of micro soldering here at Fix My Oculus because in the grand scheme of things, it's very labor intensive compared to the cost of just getting a unit. So we save customers a lot of money by just being able to upgrade and swap parts in and out. If a customer reaches out to us because they've got something wrong with their board anyway, let's say the Wi-Fi has gone out on it, or, or maybe there was some sort of power surge that's caused the board to shut short out, then what we can do is we can actually take whatever board they had in here before and swap it out with one of the 256 boards to increase their storage size. Our customers who purchased a 64 gigabyte model or a 128 back in the day really love this because now they get their units back in working condition and they've got more storage size than ever before. We're going to start this repair like we start all of our repairs. We need to take out the face shield here by removing these six T2 screws. Once I've taken out those T2 screws, I can take my pry tool here and I can wedge in between the shield and the frame and I can just pop the little clips that are on the inside. We'll go in on either side, pop both of those, and then we'll lift the face shield up from the nose. By lifting it up this way, we protect this ribbon cable here, which is attached to our proximity sensor. We'll go ahead and pop that latch and we'll pull the proximity sensor ribbon cable straight out. Now we've got five screws that hold in the face plate on this side. So we'll take those out now. All you need to take these screws out is just your Phillips triple zero bit here. Now that I've got all the screws out, the face plate will just pop off. What I'll do is I'll grab here at the top corner and pull, and then we'll do it at the same corner on the opposite side, and it just pops off. I'm going to use my Phillips screwdriver to remove these three screws here. They hold down this retainer, which holds down the charge port here and the battery here. I'm also going to take out these eight screws that hold in this retainer here, which is attached to this Bluetooth antenna and holds the fan down. Before you take this bar out here, you need to make sure that this Wi-Fi antenna is unclipped from the board. And then that just comes out like that. Just for safety, I'll go ahead and pop the battery latch and the charge board cable. Once I've got this Bluetooth antenna unscrewed, we're just going to pull up on the cable here and we're going to pull that up from the board just gently like that. I've got one more screw that holds the fan in. That's a Phillips screw as well. We'll go ahead and undo that now. And then this LED lamp is just adhered onto the fan, so we'll lift that up gently and pull the fan straight out and then pull this out of the motherboard just like that. Now the motherboard's pretty exposed and you can kind of see what we're working with here. This heat sink has four screws that hold it in and the motherboard has one, two, three, four normal screws as well as this hex bolt that holds it in. We need to take out all the cables in order to remove the motherboard as well. So we'll just do all those things starting with the heat sink.
you need to be careful with these latches when you're doing them. I like to use my little pry tool and just very gently pop each latch and then move it back very slowly. You don't want to wiggle it too much from side to side because the tabs on the outsides of the latch are pretty delicate. They're, they're prone to breaking and if they break, then the latch won't close properly. On these smaller latches, I kind of have to use tweezers and you want to make sure that you sever any adhesive that's underneath the cables. All right, now we can take our screws out. One thing to watch out for on these screws is they do not have magnetic properties. So I like to use tweezers to hold these in place so they don't just go everywhere. And then last but not least, I'll use this little hex bolt adapter to fit over that bolt and remove that from the board. Now I should be able to just get my fingers up underneath this board and pretty much pull it straight out. Just like that. We'll take our new board and we'll pop that in there. You wanna make sure that all these ribbon cables are on top of the board so nothing gets trapped underneath when we screw it back in. Looks like everything's in place to me. We can go ahead and screw that board back in. Alrighty, now that my board's screwed back in, we can go ahead and start plugging these cables. Now that my cables are all plugged in, I kind of want to show you guys something. So see these white little lines here? Those should always be parallel exactly with the latch. Now they won't necessarily be flush with the latch. There will be a little bit of space between the white line and the latch itself, but they should be exactly even with it. If it's not exactly even with it, it's probably not going to make a good connection. So just be mindful of that. Make sure everything clicks in properly. Make sure that everything's secure. Otherwise, you're gonna get this headset back together and something's not gonna work right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the battery latch and then we're gonna do a quick little test to make sure this board works. If you're trying to test the unit at this point in the process, you are gonna need a proximity sensor plugged in so we can test the tracking. If you don't have a proximity sensor like this one that I've got here, you can just use the one that's on your face shield. Well, we were gonna power it up, but it's dead. Oh, it's got life. All right, now let's power it up. That's a good sign. All right, it looks like the headset's tracking and the LCD's working. It just told me that the fan's not working properly, which makes sense because I don't have it plugged in. So I think that this test is complete. And we go ahead and put everything back together. We're gonna go ahead and put our little heat sink on. Once our heat sink's on and screwed in, we can go ahead and pop our fan back in place. Go ahead and put this one screw up here at the corner. And then we'll go ahead and plug this fan back in while we're here. Our Bluetooth antenna will hook in right here on this clip. And then we kind of need to guide it through these little retainers here. I always like to put these long screws in first, but it doesn't matter which order the screws go in, as long as they all get in there. There's a couple different screws here. We're gonna take the round top screws that have a little bit of blue paint on them, and those will go where the fan is, so closer to the inside. And the thinner screws with the flat tops, those will go in the four spots on the outside, one, two, three, and four. Now we can go ahead and take our retaining bar. It'll hook underneath the board here, and then sit on that strut that hex bolt that we put in place. And we'll take two short little screws. This slightly longer screw will go at the top and then we can clip our Wi-Fi antenna back in. Perfect. Now we can put our faceplate back on. I'm gonna do one final test, make sure everything boots up now that everything's plugged in. All right, everything's working for me, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this back off. Now we need to resecure the faceplate by plugging our screws back in. Now we've just gotta connect this proximity sensor ribbon cable in here where this extender cable is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up very carefully with the latch open. That just slides in like that. Press down a little bit and close the latch with your finger. And 
then close it up, clip it in on both sides. And now we can put our T2 screws back in. Alrighty guys, and that is it. That headset now has 256 gigabytes of storage and it's ready to go back home. If this is something you're thinking about doing to your headset, we do have boards available on fixmyoculus.com. So whether you've got the 64 gigabyte or the 128, you can upgrade your storage size and get more use out of your headset. This repair process is also a great solution for people who have board issues or maybe liquid damage, maybe shorts in their board due to charge port failures and issues. So it's a great repair process to have in your toolbox just in case you want to do this to your headset or somebody else's. Guys, I appreciate you hanging out with me. If you do get a chance to hit that like and subscribe button, it really helps us out. And if you guys get a chance to check out our other videos, that helps us out too. Of course, if you have any questions or concerns, you can always reach out to us on our website, fixmyoculus.com. And we will see you guys on the next one.